All right, welcome to the CES meeting. Uh, today's agenda is that we're going to briefly discuss uh, whether this, this group has anything to say about promised out all properties. We have scheduled where we will schedule a conversation about uh, realm revocable for a future meeting. Uh, you mean all settled? I don't recognize a promise not all properties. Yes, all properties is what uh, what what Alex has put on the agenda. So so we'll 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 start off with clarifying what that is. Um, okay. And uh, next week we have uh, a packed agenda. The first half of our meeting is a uh, we have invited guests, uh, the proponents of uh, module assertions to discuss. Um, the enforceability of module assertions. Um, and uh, and then the second half, we're meeting with Jordan. And uh, hopefully, we can send a reminder so that uh, all of that stays on the rails. Um, so today, let's start with discussing Alex's topic of promised to all properties. Alex, can you start with recapping what the, pro uh, what the proposal is? I certainly can. Um, so basically, I'm sharing an email thread that I started a couple months ago in the SES strategy email list. Uh, basically, um, when I was looking at, I saw some code that came across my screen um, where we would, de we would be defining an object in an asynchronous function, but we would have to await individual properties. And that bothered me. Um, it's not how promises are should be used. It's legal, but it's not the way that asynchronous operations should happen. What would happen is you'd have to wait for the shape property in this example, and then the color property, and then the mass property. Um, we have the ability through promise.all and promise.race to run multiple functions simultaneously, excuse me, multiple promises simultaneously so that they don't block each other. So I, I got to thinking um, it'd be a really good idea to add a promise.all properties function, a, make a, a static function to the language wherein if you wanted to await all of those in a promise.all like context, um, having that built into the language would probably be a good idea. Um, the one thing that stopped me from running a straw man is that this really isn't a um, security kind of thing. That's why I was wondering, is this even relevant for SES? And um, in the email thread um, later on, um, it turns out that other people, Bradley, Jordan, and Mark have all looked at this kind of idea and said, yeah, we kind of do the same thing. Um, the other thing worth mentioning is that it's, although it's easy to do a workaround for this, um, it's not something that a relatively new JavaScript engineer might even might even imagine. And I just wanted to have an open discussion and see what people thought about this. Um, a, does SES even care, or should it be uh, proposed to TC39 outside SES, which is perfectly fair. And uh, B, um, is this something that people are interested in exploring and in, in terms of adding it to the language or should this just be dropped as, hey, there's an easy workaround? That's really all I had to say on it. I just wanted to hear what people thought. This, uh, oh, go ahead. Um, we do have a fairly sizable kind of proxy that we're using to do something similar, actually, because uh, the developer vigilance in order to await everything properly is uh, difficult to maintain in a larger code base. Um, so basically what our proxy does is something similar to explain it. Instead of doing it as this does where it does a shallow uh, traversal. We actually do a very deep synchronous traversal uh, and then coalesce into kind of a mirrored object after that. Um, I think 
this is very useful, particularly if it is done deeply, because then you know everything available within the entire object um, that is traversed is available synchronously. So that's my only opinion is maybe it shouldn't be shallow. In the queue ecosystem, I did implement both shallow and deep versions of this as analogs for promise.all or queue.all. Um, and, uh, and I put, I put something like all your all properties in, uh, an utility library until I could figure out whether it was, um, useful enough to integrate into Q proper. Um, it turned out to not be, uh, a, it turned out to not be popular enough to put inside of the payload of Q, but it certainly is popular enough that I think that it would be beneficial for it to be part of the language. Um, uh, I don't think that this is a secure, it's not a security related thing, but it is promises and promises were brought in for security related reasons. Um, so it'd be, this is this is the right audience to talk about promises, I think very much. Um, I don't think that it needs any, uh, it, it certainly doesn't need to be blessed by this group to be proposed. I, I agree with that last point. Um... But, uh, but I disagree that actually that it belongs in the language. Uh, and it's for a practical reason that this is so analogous to the object copy problem. There are numerous dimensions that are going to be flexed in different ways for different use cases. Things like deep versus shallow, eager versus lazy, um, innumerable versus uh, all own, um, let's sy symbol properties versus string valued only. Like there's, there's so many things that, that this kind of thing basically becomes, um, use case specific and it's practic. It is impractical for, um, a capability in the language to support all of them. And therefore it usually ends up not existing. That's what it's the same reason that there's no deep copy in, uh, in the language. Yeah, I'm 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 very much with Richard on on this point. The um, uh, in Endo, uh, where you know where Endo is Cess plus our distributed object semantics, uh, we take a very very specific stance on what a passable value is, and within that very specific stance, um, uh, uh, we have we do have. Uh, an abstraction called all comparable that uh, takes a um, a promise for a passable. I'm sorry, takes a passable, uh, which includes promise for passable. Takes a passable, which may have promises at the leaves, and returns a promise for a comparable, where a comparable in the distributed object semantics is something whose pass by copy superstructure terminates only in um, uh, in uh, atomically comparable leaves, which is primitive values and, uh, I, I, and uh, remotable objects, which are objects with unforgeable identity. Uh, so the uh, all comparable is the deep generalization, but the deep generalization there is well-defined for exactly the reasons that Richard grazes, which is it's within a whole set of decisions that characterize what's effectively a new language semantics embedded in the JavaScript semantics that have made very particular choices. Uh, oh. May I respond? Sure. Um, first and foremost, um, I'm not familiar with the object copy problem as you've described it. Maybe I am, but not as the, under that name. Um, I am familiar with the with the fact that recursively diving in is a complicated problem that is generally left out of the language, and I'm fine with that. Um, where was I going? Well, um, I, think, I think that I can finish for you. Is that uh, it is a much it's a much lower burden to introduce all properties as a shallow uh, a shallow copy of of, of of enumerable promises on an object. Thank you for that. Um, I would love to see even a shallow 
capability for that. Um, now, it, the, again, I'm just sh throwing the idea out there. Um, uh, qu qu question already? Um, uh, maybe this is directed more at Chris since he just said enumerable. Why enumerable? Um, because the common pattern, uh, the, the pattern that this is for is, is uh, or is likely to be most useful for is an object literal. Um, I say, uh, innumerable is perhaps too strong. Certainly own um, the so I, shallow copy of with, with all of the immediate values resolved is, okay. is, 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 is approximately as useful as promise.all on arrays, but for objects used as structs. So the, the thing that there's two analogies that, uh, that I would make for this that pull in opposite, that, that make a, that pull in opposite directions with regard to yet another distinction. Uh, the thing that this seems to me to be most like is an eventual form of um, uh, object.keys or object.entries. And object.keys and object.entries, uh, believe it or not, are specific to enumerable own string valued. And the other thing that's analogous to is triple dot, which is specific to enumerable own not restricted to string valued. And the fact that those are different uh, is uh, something that um, uh, is, you know, incredibly unfortunate. Um, I have thought about um, the possibility of having promises on the keys, not on the values. And I do not like that idea. Um, I'm just saying, so that, why would so you that, have, why would you have an object where the key was a promise? We um, have it because we need to coalesce jobs that are asynchronously resolving to data. Um, Matthew, we, uh, uh, I'm not going to call out for hands. Um, so just, just please do try to get in, get in a word no. edgewise. I, I wanted to basically say the same thing as Mark. Uh, there is two precedents, the uh, object construction and object.entries, object.keys, uh, which behave only on enumerable, but there, yeah. Anyway, that was already said. Yeah, I was very surprised recently, by the way, and had a bug in my code due to not realizing that uh, object.entries did not include symbol named properties. Uh, that was, I actually had a security hole in my code as a result of that. Um, Alex, I think in summary that you can anticipate that if you were to bring this forth to TC39, um, that it would, the, the, the shallow, the narrowest profile would be a, sh a shallow version of this. And I think that you, that we've visited some of the arguments it'll immediately run up against. Like a choice about what what kind of all properties it'll be, um, and yeah, I I'd, I'd welcome the conversation personally. Okay, um, yeah, I can uh, try to draw something up, uh, but then I've promised to draw things up in the past and I never got around to it. Um, but this Art. is relatively simple, I think, compared to my other ideas. Are you in a position where you can champion this yourself? No, I am not. I do not work for a company that is a member of TC39. Okay. So, um, so you'll be looking for a volunteer. That would be much appreciated. Um, before we close this topic out, I do want to raise another part that I thought about when I took this a step further. Um, when we look at this in terms of maps and iterating over, iterating over the values of a map, it gets quite a bit uglier. Um, I'm thinking for an initial straw man, we would want to leave out maps, but call it out as a uh, danger Will Robinson moment, so hmm. to speak. Um, just as an initial stage zero, hey, here's an idea. Just uh, call okay. it, go ahead, Mark. So uh, with regard to, so the, I think maps is actually uh, a, a, a good way to understand better what stance you have in mind 
Uh, in what way would the idea you're talking about, do you think it would generalize to maps? I haven't thought it th through fully yet. Um, I've got my, am I still sharing my screen here? Um, yes. Yes. Uh, so I can walk through what we do with a shallow version of this behavior on our link phase in nodes ES module loader, if that helps. Yeah, go ahead. If you want me to stop sharing my screen, just say so. Um, you can keep sharing it. I'm not going to show code because it's just going to be okay. gobbledygook. Um, basically, in nodes module loader, we have the concept of a module map that we've discussed multiple times at TC39. And the module map is actually represented by a JavaScript map structure. And that map structure does a few things. Uh, but in particular, it can have pending resolutions and it can have pending jobs. So for any given module loaded and each of its dependencies in particular, you try to resolve it asynchronously and then you populate a job. The job is what's going to be used to store things like the source text that it loads and hold on to the module namespace object for some other operations going on. Um, when you do this and a module has dependencies, we actually have to wait on all those dependencies to get their module okay. job finished before we link or evaluate. Okay. And so it's this kind of big for loops <laughs> everywhere where we do essentially uh, a big loop over everything um, that is basically just an object. <laughs> Uh, we're storing it as maps for uh, reasons, but uh, basically the idea is not all keys are strings for this module map. This is increasingly becoming the case with the HTML integration spec for import assertions, and it's likely going to become the case even more so in the future, it looks like. Um, our original intent was to allow for this module map to have direct first class values as the keys rather than a string or a URL, um, but that's likely never going to come to fruition. Um, but right now we do essentially this on a map object where both the left and right hand, uh, the key and the value are both promises, essentially. Usually the right hand is not a promise. It's already resolved, but we keep it wrapped. That's all. Hmm. Intriguing. Um, I have many questions that are completely irrelevant to the topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if I think about how I would implement this how I would implement promise to all properties based around the object.entries method. And I keep maps in there because maps are iterable by, na by nature. Um, your point is well taken, uh, Bradley. Um, I'm going to have so to rewatch this video one thing, afterward. One thing that might be constructive is we have a lot of different entry um methods um they're on sets they're on arrays maps everything it might also make sense to instead of work directly on an object to just accept an array of pairs since that's what they always return for entries even sets which we have large yeah numbers. i was thinking the same thing um It would huh. essentially be like a flat map and promise all with a limited depth. Yeah, it could be um, promise dot all entries could be the core primitive that would unite um, unite each of these concepts. So that that would just be a shorthand for an await uh, object from entries promise dot all. Um. 
Great answer is promise. All Not exactly. It's a. It's it, it's, it's uh, you. It's yeah. It's similar. There there, it would be waiting for the resolution of the uh, of all of the values of the underlying array instead of or in addition to waiting for the resolution of the entry itself. Oh, you mean uh, if there is a promise in either of the key or value uh, of, uh, of the entries, wait, wait on that. I see. Yeah. Yeah, that would make it a lot easier then. Yeah. All right. Um... Yeah, um, Alex. Uh... Let's um let's make a note that you're looking for a volunteer to co-champion this idea with you, um, and uh, and uh, if you find time for it, uh, take it from there. The um, the next topic on our agenda is um, what constraints should we as uh, as champions of CES um, impose upon other proposals to TC39. Um, we, uh, uh, by we, I mean Mark uh, blocked a proposal, I don't recall which one at the last TC39 plenary, since it was going to introduce a new hidden intrinsic iterator prototype. Yeah, I can, I, can, I, I can say very clearly which one it was. It was something in Intel internationalization. Um, yeah. And the, yeah. The, and, the new, and the new intrinsics it was introducing were completely unnecessary they were, uh, uh, and the, the reason why they were introducing it revealed that there were previous proposals that I should have blocked on these grounds that I didn't because of inattention. Um, uh, every time I think that there's some big area like dates or regexp, regexp was the specific one in this case, or internationalization that, well, surely this is just um, uh, about this specialized area that doesn't have any security implications. Every time I, I, I drop my guard on that, uh, something that's fatal to security slips in that we then have to clean up later. Uh, so this is one of the reasons why uh, it would be very good to have to try to start writing down more of these invariants so that uh, we don't have to, to be so on guard and other people can start to notice when they're about to break some security property. Uh, the um, uh, the problem is not that there was new API that returned an iterator or an iterable. Uh, the problem was that the way in which the API was introduced purely based on preserving tradition from, from what was seen as the tradition of previous APIs was to introduce essentially a new iterator class with its own primordials, its own prototype object in particular, uh, to represent the new iter iter iterable or iterator class, uh, which was which is completely unnecessary, um, and the Intel thing is not blocked. Uh, it is that they have to revise the API in a way that a hundred percent preserves their intended semantics, but doesn't further project this particular broken precedent. Let's, um, I, I want to, uh, I've been thinking about this and I've been thinking uh, about what is the, what is the hard security invariant? Um, is it, this, this has been a concern of, a, a concern of mine from a future, future compatible uh, or, or ensuring the future security of, of the lockdown shim mm -hmm. that new language syntax. Yep would introduce a, uh, the, the new language syntax. Like for example, if we were to add observable functions to the language as has been proposed in the past um, as, a, as a dual to uh, iterator functions, um, the, the, that would introduce syntax from which you could obtain a reference to a prototype uh, that did not previously exist in the language and, and, uh, and existing code that is trusting a lockdown shim um, to ensure that there's no mutable state accessible from to client code that could be used as a side channel or a, um, a, 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 a beachhead for interfering with, with uh, code in the same compartment. Um, 
could be would be unpreventable. It would it would basically be it, assuming that that the lockdown yeah. was not maintained. It would be a zero day exploit uh, yep. upon release in a particular engine and uh, uh, and invalidate the lockdown shim. Yeah, and we've we've had that situation before with the uh, old Kaha SES that was um, when uh, engines started rolling out implementations of async function. Uh, async function made new primordials reachable only by syntax. Our whitelisting mechanism was therefore not able to detect or remove them, uh, and we had a zero day. Yeah, so I think that the strong language invariant that we need to propose to TC39 at some future meeting is uh, the invariant that the language, if it does add additional syntax that reveals intrinsics, that those intrinsics also be accessible by property access discoverable from, uh, by, by uh, discoverable by walking properties starting at global this. Um, and then uh, uh, Mark and I were bantering yesterday about what the shape of that would look like. Would it be something like, um, uh, in, in, like for example, to backfill the principle onto uh, proposals that have already violated this in order to establish a pattern for future fixes? Um, would we introduce something like realm.asyncIterator prototype? Not realm, but um, something. <laughs> With something, <laughs> something yeah. you think iterator prototype accessible from global, um, and then suggest or mandate that any future proposal that adds syntax also provide it, uh, provide access to that prototype in that location. Um, and yeah, I think I, that, that's a minimum. Yeah, I like that. Uh, for one thing, uh, I've seen a number of libraries uh, independently try to dis try to enumerate all of the anonymous intrinsics. Uh, Jordan wrote one that's independent of CES. Uh, I have not compared these to each other for coverage, um, uh, but it's unfortunate that people keep need, needing to try to do this and that it's accident prone. Uh, and there was even one case for which there was a primordial enumerated by the language that nobody could figure out how to reify using code in the language. Uh, and it was a big mystery for a while. And it was a security, uh, you know, it was potential security vulnerability. It was the sync to async iterable adapter or something. Um, uh, the, um, uh, so I think that not just making new primordials uh, uh, findable by name-based traversal starting from the global, uh, but taking all of the old ones that were not discoverable in this way and making them discoverable, naming all of them, uh, I think would be good. Starting from the one that was introduced in ES5, which is the um, uh, the uh, th uh, th type throw type type thrower. I forget what it's called. Um, the thing that was representing the poisoning of function dot caller and function dot arguments. The getter that always throws. Yeah, it's called something like throw type error or thrower. Or yeah. Magic. Yeah. Um, so if I if I may, the in summary, the low bar is that the language must not introduce new language. That the language in uh, when adding any 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 syntax added to the language must. Uh, uh, reveal any of the hidden hidden uh, hidden objects that it would would make reachable by syntax, so that they can also be reached by a name so, traversal. I don't think we want to rely upon alias uh, in that way or so broadly. Alias. Oops, um, I misspoke. Apologies. Proceed. Oh, <laughs> other conversation in parallel. Yeah, <laughs> you can't see the other people, but they're here. Sorry. <laughs> they're there. <laughs> we believe you, Richard. <laughs> so I'm, I'm um, here live. I'm not a cat. <laughs> so I, I would say that it's, it's that uh, it's not just syntax. Uh, it's all new primordials should be 
discoverable by name-based traversal. So, so uh, that, that's, that's why I specifically specifically start with the lowest bar. Okay. okay. The one, the lowest bar, the one that is firmly necessary yeah. in order to uh, to ensure the invariance of existing lockdowns continue to to be uh, to to be in invulnerable to future zero days. That is the minimum. Okay, um, I agree. I agree. That's the minimum. The, the, the next step above that would be obviously to satisfy the desire for the, 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 the language as it stands to establish a firm precedent um, for, for future additions by backfilling that principle to other things that have been in, in added in the past, like async iterator. Um, and then the next more firm above that would be, I, uh, which is I, uh, I, I do not think that um, I do not think that the Intel proposal actually violated either of those two invariants. Um, it it it, uh, it 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 it's it's violating a softer invariant um, that any API added to the language must also reveal any of the prototypes or constructors of the things that it's going to return from functions. Um, well, it's it's the, when you say return from functions, it's uh, any any reifiable primordial. Uh, the um, you know any new reifiable primordial should be discoverable by property traversal, um, uh, and re, uh, reifiable means it's not necessarily just that it returns; it might pass it as an argument to a callback function, or there's a zillion ways in which something might be reified. I don't think we need to to distinguish return values. Yes, I agree. Um, that any 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 object that is revealed by a new API to to client code should be discoverable. Now, any any primordial my, object. Any primordial. My my. I think that I think that um, I think we need to frame the argument in terms of what we need what we would like and what would be nice. And the last one would be nice. And we're blocking a proposal based on a would be nice at the moment. Um, and, and we should make that clear in order to not uh, argument on the others. The, the, you're talking about the Intel proposal? The Intel proposal specifically, yes. Uh, I think that's more than a would be nice. Well, at the moment, lockdown it, it it does nothing to invalidate lockdown because intel itself isn't exposed and it ah. also it also does not provide any uh, and even if it were exposed um we would be in a position uh, that any new api they add would not be automatically revealed to client code via lockdown because it's not in the whitelist um and so therefore there's no zero day exploit that is created by this behavior either okay uh, Okay, would be nice still is too so. I, I get your distinction. I would like a phrasing that sounds stronger than would be nice. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. How about not completely fatal? <laughs> yes, non fatal is good. I, I can go with that. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Um, uh, I'll make a note in the minutes so that there's an action item to. Uh, Okay, so and some other th so some other things along these lines uh, is that um, uh, uh, no introduction of uh, hidden of primordial hidden state or primordial I/O abilities, um, uh, uh, and especially no introduction to uh, of such state or I/O abilities to any primordial object that currently does not have them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that we can bundle this name based enumeration with uh, another issue that that um, that we've been facing that the that the controversies over the realm proposal makes yet more urgent, which is um, a, uh, we've, we've talked about the needs to have some kind of platform uh, provided enumeration of the safe standard globals. 
um, the safe standard JavaScript globals, uh, i.e. Um, uh, omitting the hosts, but including safe globals introduced as the language evolves so that old uh, lockdowns can potentially honor new safe globals. Uh, the object on which these safe globals reside could also be an object that from which uh, all of the currently uh, undiscoverable uh, primordials can be discovered. Uh, Chris, you seem to be muted. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah, I, I think that we have taken this topic to a satisfying conclusion. Um, the and and the and the queue is empty for <laughs> so um, I think that we can reclaim some time. All right, thank you. I'm going to stop recording.